What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. And this one is some of my final thoughts ahead of the game week nine deadline. So I'm going to go through all the latest press conference information, answer some of your questions, talk about captaincy and also talk about the weather. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and let's jump into it. All right, let's start off with Arsenal. There's two main players that were flagged over the international break that people have been wondering about, and that is Bakayo Saka and then obviously William Saliba as well. So Arteta on Saka said we, uh, he's been working so hard to be fit for the game, so that's obviously the Chelsea game in game week nine. Let's see where he is today. So he's not confirmed that he is fit to play. He's not confirmed that he's out or anything like that. I think it's an interesting one because last week he said he was in contention to play against Man City and then wasn't in the squad at all. He's surely going to be a bit closer after having two weeks off. And we know that Saka generally always plays up until last week. And that's kind of what's put a few doubts in my mind so this is what i would say if you're on game week 10 wildcard and you're happy with the rest of your squad then i feel like saka to a different midfielder is probably where your one week punt is if you're someone that's already wildcard or you're not planning to do it anytime soon i think you keep hold of him because chelsea away okay he could get a return on that if he plays if he doesn't play is that the end of the world probably not but then you've got those two really good home fixtures in the next three game weeks. So Sheffield United at home game week 10 and Burnley at home game week 12. And I do think Saka is one of those players that we are going to want back in our squad sooner rather than later. So if you've already got him and then you take him out and then you're going to want him back, that's two transfers. And there is always a chance that he'll play against Chelsea as well. So I think for most people, I'd keep hold of him unless you're on the one week punt route, in which case you could get rid of him. On Saliba, he had a toe injury apparently. Uh, Arteta said he's been carrying that for weeks now. We have to use the time to settle. Could he play tomorrow? Depends on how uh, how he is able to train today. I think Saliba starts, right? Generally, if I, I said this last week, right? Whatever Arteta says, I always think the opposite is going to happen. So if he's saying he's not sure if Saliba can play, I'm almost certain he's going to be in that 11. And look, again, maybe we should take him at his word that he has been carrying this injury for a while. But... We haven't seen any issues in his game. He hasn't been coming off early or anything like that. It just so happens that he, the injury kind of came out that he was a doubt just after he played the full game against Man City ahead of an international break. That seems maybe a little bit suspicious to me. Maybe I'm just a FPL manager that's a bit cynical. I don't know. But I feel like Saliba definitely plays. I think he's their most important defender. Sakura I'm less sure about. If I had to guess, I'd say he's going to start. Um... But I think a lot of it will depend on what the situation is with your own FPL team, which obviously I've already gone through. If I had him and I wasn't wildcarding soon, I would just keep hold of him. And I'd probably start him as well, unless you've got a really good option on the bench, which probably most people don't this week. So if you're new to FPL this season, there's a lot to think about, such as captaincy, fixture swings, double and blank game weeks, chip use, injuries, etc. You also have to think about the weather every now and again, and that's happening this week. Because there is currently a storm over the UK and Ireland that is causing some issues. And some people are concerned that it might postpone some of the games in the Premier League this weekend. Now it's worth saying at the time of recording, no games are being called off and most of them are not a threat. But there is some noise going around about Nottingham Forest versus Luton at home. So a few tweets saying that the game is at risk of being called off. One of them is from ex-NFFC employee, so similar to the West Ham guy I guess, but for Nottingham Forest. And said, barring a minor miracle, the club expect tomorrow's game to be called off. Club staff are doing everything possible, but with the proximity of the Trent, that's the river near the ground, and forecast, it seems an uphill task. So it's not necessarily just about whether the pitch is ready. It's all also about the fans getting to the game. So there is some noise around this, and you could say there's no smoke without fire, but... Since then, The Athletic have tweeted and said, Nottingham Forest do not believe that Saturday's fixture against Luton Town will be put at risk of flooding in the city. So as it stands, no games have been called off and none are really at threat. But Nottingham Forest probably is a game that we need to monitor. Now for most people, it's not going to be a huge issue. Most of us probably shouldn't be playing Luton players at the moment anyway. Maybe you've still got Morris from the double game week, in which case you'll have to think about that. The one player that a lot of people are playing this week is Matt Turner in goal for Nottingham Forest against Luton. But again, I don't think this is really that big of an issue. If you've got two playing goalkeepers, you just play Turner. And if it gets postponed and we don't find out until after the deadline, 
your bench goalkeeper just comes on instead. And if that's a Pickford versus Liverpool away or an Ariola against Villa away, it's really not the end of the world for one week only. It's not something that I would be using a transfer on. If you're wildcarding in game week 10 and the rest of your team looks good, then you could take a one week punt on a goalkeeper instead. But it doesn't sound that exciting to me. So people have asked about the weather more generally. Is there any games at risk of being called off? And it doesn't seem so at the moment. Forest is maybe the main one. The Athletic is a pretty good source and they're saying there's probably not much of an issue. But obviously the deadline isn't until tomorrow and I'm sure we'll hear more about this from then until now. So if you can, just wait for more updates tomorrow. So there were lots of questions around Newcastle updates, mostly around Alexander Isak. So this is what Eddie Howe has said. Alex hasn't trained with us yet, so we're going to leave it late to see if he's fit and available. Now most of the games this weekend or on Saturday. There's only one game on Sunday, which is Aston Villa versus West Ham. And then on Monday, you've got Spurs versus Fulham. So I think given that Newcastle are playing at three o'clock on Saturday, and Eddie Howe is saying that he hasn't yet trained with them, that doesn't seem likely that he's going to start. Now, the key really would be to find out what Callum Wilson's injury status is, because I'm pretty sure, and he's not flagged, and he wasn't mentioned in the press conference, that he was a bit of a doubt recently, and I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but he obviously has had two weeks off over the international break. So if Wilson has been trained and he's available, I just don't see why they would risk Isaac, and obviously you've got Champions League and stuff like that coming up again soon as well. So if you're an Isaac owner, unless we get another kind of an update from now um, until the deadline on Saturday I think he's probably worth even selling I would say because after game week 9 you got Wolves away which is okay Arsenal at home which is tricky in game week 11 and then Bournemouth away in game week 12 which is pretty good but I don't think you can be confident that he's going to start every single one of those uh, one of those games anyway so as it stands I think Isaac is probably someone to look to transfer out obviously it's always team dependent if you've got someone on the bench that can come on and you don't want to take a hit etc then keep hold of him but I would be worried about whether or not he's going to start it's not a definite that he's out but it doesn't seem that convincing from what Eddie Howe has said he also spoke about Botman he said Sven is improving and the two weeks have been good for him but he didn't say whether or not he was fit for game week nine now if you're wild card in this week I think you just go for Dan Byrne to be safe if you're on wild card 10 I think the Botman um situation is kind of interesting because he might drop in price and if he does go down to 4.6 million he probably is then the best option to pick up if you want a Newcastle defender on game week 10 wild card but if you're looking to play him this week he is going to be a doubt to start and like I said you've got those Champions League games coming up for Newcastle they've got lots of big games in that competition do they want to risk him for Crystal Palace at home and make that injury worse I would say probably not it's not like that Crystal Palace game is you know huge or anything like that like can they beat crystal palace at home without botman i would say yes so i'm not convinced he's going to start this week either i don't think he's probably integral to people's plans in game week nine or anything like that but it's just keep that's worth keeping note of if he's back for game week 10 obviously different conversation maybe we put him in wild cards and stuff like that so yeah my guess and it is just a guess would be that Isaac and bottom probably don't feature in game week nine unless we hear anything else before the deadline so i watched the clips from the Ange postacoglu press conference and there doesn't seem to be any issues with the fpl players that we would pick from spurs he said all the international guys are back fine so that's anyone that went away on international duty during the break he he said the medical reports came back okay so you've got the likes of Udogi for Italy, Romero for Argentina, Madison for England, Son for South Korea as well they all seem to be fine obviously with Son we know he's been carrying a bit of an issue and they're managing him but he seems to be fully fit for Fulham at home so if you've got him absolutely great option I think in terms of that issue that he's carrying we'll have to just monitor it over the next few weeks but while he's continuing to start he looks like a great pick he also said that brennan johnson is all good he missed out in game week eight he said well we will see how he goes the next few days so he's not guaranteed to be in that start 11 that doesn't really affect many people unless you went for the richarlison punt in game week eight because in game week eight richarlison was on the left son was through the middle and kulisevsky on the right if johnson is fit and available to play he could play on the left and Richarlison could be benched but I just think Richarlison will get this game I think it's game week 10 onwards that you need to be worried about and he said yeah no other injury concerns so if you've got Udogi, Poro, Madison, Son etc you should be fine for Fulham at home 
So lots of people have asked me whether or not I think Julian Alvarez will start for Man City against Brighton in game week nine. And from what I can see, Pep Guardiola wasn't asked about any of the players returning from international duty, but he did give an injury update. And he said, all good, no problems, except Kevin De Bruyne. I don't know when he'll be back. So Man City have a fully fit squad to choose from based on what Pep has said so far. So my assumption will be that Alvarez starts. I know we've got this constant worry over Man City players. And for all the right reasons, by the way... But as we know, for the first eight game weeks, Alvarez has started every single game. Now, we've been here before with Man City players. Every now and again, as a player that starts a bunch of games in a row, like eight, nine, ten games, all of a sudden they're dropped. Could that happen with Alvarez? It could. But everything we've seen so far makes me think that he's going to continue to keep that place in the team and probably start in game week nine. After the last international break, he did start after that. But it is worth saying City or Pep, sorry, has got a fully fit squad apart from De Bruyne to pick from. So could they put out an 11 if Alvarez is knackered without him? Yes, they could do it. So I wouldn't say there's no risk, but my money would be on him starting unless we hear anything else before the deadline. Now, as I say every single week, there are sometimes embargoed press conference quotes that come out at 10.30 p.m. UK time. So if you can, you want to make your transfers as late as possible. I know that's not always... Um, possible for some people because maybe they're you know having a life and stuff like that but for the rest of us if you can wait until 10 30 to see if pep says anything about alvarez happy days and even better if you can wait until closer to the deadline and join me on the deadline stream of course but from everything we know so far pep has a fully fit squad to choose from apart from de Bruyne. that has to include alvarez and based on what we've seen so far i'm expecting him to start but there are obviously some uh, slight risks there all right, let's talk about what Jurgen Klopp said in his press conference today because a lot of people have been wondering about Simakas at 4.4 million. So he confirmed that Andrew Robertson is set for surgery on his dislocated shoulder and went on to say he will be out for a while. Now, we didn't get a time frame, but a day or two ago, there were reports that if Robertson needed surgery, he could be out for up to 10 weeks. Even if he's back sooner than that, let's say eight weeks, I still think there's reason to look at Simakas because it's the 20th of October right now and if he's out for eight weeks, that takes you all the way through to the 15th of December. And if we look at the fixtures that Liverpool have, on the 16th of December, that's game week 17. They play Man United at home. You probably wouldn't want a defender for that fixture anyway. And then they've got Arsenal at home in game week 18. So we're not really worried about that. Game week 16, which is Palace away, and kind of the end of the really good run for Liverpool is the 9th of December. So that's about seven weeks away. So I think... When you look at it like that, Simicast at 4.4 million probably is worth a punt because apart from Man City away in game week 13, from nine to six, from game week 9 to 16, the fixtures are all pretty good. So I would look at him, for sure, if you need a cheap defender this week, you're on wildcard, whatever. Klopp did go on to say, though, when he, was, when he was asked about, or he was talking about left-back options, he said it's not just Simicast. He cannot play all the games from now on. Joe Gomez can also play the position. We have Luke, Ch uh, Luke Chambers and other young boys. We need options, so that's good. So that has put a little bit of doubt in my mind. But I think for 4.4 million, that probably is worth the risk. I'd be very surprised if he's not first choice. Some Liverpool fans, to be fair, did kind of suggest that Gomez could play in that role. But I still feel like Simicast is going to be first choice while Robertson is out. And obviously, it's not just Premier League games that Liverpool have. There's also Europa League. So maybe Gomez plays in those games. I don't know. And I'm certainly not sitting here telling you that Simicast is going to play every single game from now until Robertson is back. But I think he'll play enough where at 4.4 million, he's probably still a good option. But obviously, you can decide how much risk you want to take there. Um, he also confirmed that Cody Gakpo joined his teammates in training ahead of the Merseyside derby. I think that might have been today, possibly yesterday. If that's the case, Gakpo hasn't trained that much over the international break. So I'm not sure he's going to be used in game week nine. Um, so that maybe means that one of Diaz or Nunez, maybe even both, could start. Klopp did say they were back earlier than they had been last time as well. They booked better flights. So that could be a good thing for Diaz and Nunez this week. But obviously you've got the Jota option as well. But either way, Gapo being out is good for everyone else's overall minutes as well. Otherwise, I don't think there was a huge amount of updates for Liverpool. So yeah, Robertson the main one. I still think Simicast looks good. But maybe we will see Gomez play. I think if you're on game week 10 wildcard, it's going to be interesting to see what happens against Everton.
All right, let's quickly discuss captaincy for game week nine. Now, I think the top three options that most people are going to be looking at are Harlan, Salah, and Son. I've put Fernandez, Madison, and Watkins on the graphic, but most people aren't going to be looking at them for captaincy. Like if players like Darwin get confirmed as starting, then he could be a differential. But most of us are going to be looking at Harlan, Salah, and Son. So they're the three I'm going to talk about. I've put Harlan at the top because I think if you go back to game week one, and you look at game week nine and you saw Haaland against Brighton, Salah against Everton, most people would have said, I'm definitely going to captain Haaland. The only thing that's changed is obviously Haaland's blanked a couple of games in a row and Salah's just returned a 15-pointer. And that might make people think a little bit differently, which is fair enough. If you think that's going to continue, then obviously Salah is the way to go. But I just think with Rodri back and Brighton not having kept a clean sheet, that just looks really good on paper. I don't think it's necessarily going to be an easy game for Man City, but it is one of those games where Haaland could get a few returns. And I look at those underlying numbers so far, Haaland's on 0.79 expected goals per 90. That is higher than Salah's goal threat and kind of assist threat combined and obviously Salah is a great option he's a midfielder he's on penalties he always plays etc right fantastic option this week if you want to go for him you absolutely should but I just think before the last couple of weeks I would have, I would have always said Haaland have I seen enough to make me change my mind probably not but there's not really much in it right if you want to go for Salah like I've said that is the way you should go if you want some I don't know. If you want some reasons to not go Salah, it's the 12.30 kickoff after international break. Klopp hates that. We don't know if there's going to be some changes to that team. Not with Salah, of course. But is it going to be Nunez? Is it going to be Diaz? Will, will Jota play, etc.? We don't really know. Um, and, and it's a derby as well. But I don't know if that's enough that would put me off. Like I think if you think Salah's great, then I would agree. He is great. But I, I was always set on going Haaland, so I've not really changed my mind on that. I think with Son, the reason that I've always got him ahead of Madison is higher goal threat. And I think he's more likely to take penalties, even though we still don't know that is 100% true. Um, I just think with the injury that he has been managing, like I know Postcogli says everyone's fine. But if he has got an ongoing issue, there is always the chance he comes off early. And obviously the penalties aren't guaranteed either. I think you have all that with Harden and Salah. You know they're fit. They're definitely going to start. The minutes should be pretty good as well. We just don't have that absolute certainty with Son. And look, he could absolutely get enough returns in kind of 50, 60 minutes against Fulham and then be brought off around the 65th, 70th minute and not be an issue. But at the same time, he's not the only one in that team that can score. And if Spurs are looking comfortable and maybe he's got one return, he could still be then subbed off early. You just don't really expect that to happen with Salah in particular. And probably, but it's not that I don't think Haaland can be subbed off, but I think he's probably good for at least 80 minutes in that match. So I really like Son. I just think to go against Haaland and Salah at the moment, they've got to have pretty difficult fixtures. And obviously we know that Haaland had Arsenal away last week. That was a good week to do it. I'm not sure Brian at home is that week. If you want to go differential, like I said, Fernandez against Sheffield United away, Madison against Fulham at home, Watkins at home to West Ham, Darwin if he gets confirmed start, Luis Diaz, Jota, etc. against Everton. There are other options, but for me it's Haaland, closely followed by Salah, close-ishly followed by Son. All right, let's get into some of your questions. It seems like Salah is close to essential, but with Liverpool's fixtures, does it warrant a double up? Are Jota, Darwin or Diaz options or even a switch to 4-4-2 and get Trent instead? So the Liverpool fixtures are great. They are a team that are going to score a lot of goals and I do think there's plenty of clean sheets in there as well. So they are worth looking at. Just to run through some of those names that obviously aren't Salah, I don't think Jota is someone that you can go for. I think there's a really good chance that he starts in game week 9. Not guaranteed, but a good chance. But after that, I just don't know when he's going to start. Because as I said earlier, I think Diaz, Nunez and Salah is the preferred th uh, front three. So unless it's just for a one-week punt in game week nine, I think you've got to ignore Jota. I think with Diaz, he should get lots of minutes. The thing for him from an FPL point of view is he's a midfielder. And there's lots of good midfielders right now, just like there has been all season. So if we just rattle through some names, everyone wants Salah right now. People are looking at getting Saka back for game week 10. You've got Son, Madison, Matoma and Brighton are about to come into really good fixtures from game week 10. People are talking about Bowen, there's Diaby, there's probably a bunch of names that I haven't even thought about. Martinelli at 7.7 .7 million. Is it worth going for Diaz, who you can't be completely sure is going to start every single game? I think he'll start at least three of the next four, and he could start all four. But I just, I just, there's that little bit of doubt there, and I just don't know if it's worth it when there's so many other options. So I will consider Diaz on game week 10 wildcard. 
But I think ultimately when we get to the deadline, he's not someone I'll have in my team and definitely not Jota either. I think with Trent, that 4-4-2 could work, but then the attacking op- the cheap forwards and midfielders just aren't that great. Like Archer is okay because he plays. If you can afford to go to Foster at Burnley for 5 million as a forward, he's all right. There's some really cheap midfielders around 4.3, 4.4, but they're not going to get a huge amount of minutes. So you kind of not hamstring yourself but you just make your overall squad worse i've talked about this a lot right those combinations trent and a 4.5 million midfielder is probably not as good as an 8 million midfielder and a 4.5 million defender there's lots of good cheap defenders so it's not that trent is a bad option it's all about overall setup uh for your fpl squad i said a few weeks ago i think with this run they've got coming up trent is one of the biggest differentials because he's always going to play very attacking they'll get clean sheets and most people myself included are probably not going to be looking at him but i think unless you drop one of salah or harland it's just difficult to fit him into a good squad without going to something like a 4-4-2 which i don't think is a deal breaker I just think 3-5-2 with two good defenders on the bench is probably the way to go. And also, look, I know it's only game week nine. We're only at the end of October. We are going to start getting closer to Christmas, obviously. There's going to be a lot of games, and you're probably going to need that squad at times. So I would give that some thought. So I'm not writing Trent off as an option. I just think the way people's squads are set up right now, it doesn't really fit in. Darwin is probably the one that I will give the most thought to because he's taken up a forward spot. Now, there are some good forwards, Haaland, Watkins, Alvarez. After that, there's not a huge amount of other options. Like Wilson or Isaac, if you can guarantee one of them is going to start for loads of games. Solanke is a cheap option at 6.4 million, could be okay. Uh, Alvarez, Hoyland, etc. But compared to the midfielders, I, I talked about all those names. I think they're all great. Whereas with the forwards, I'm not quite so sure. And I spoke about this the other day. Watkins now 8.2 million and Darwin 7.4. So there's quite a big price difference there. And obviously the fixtures are great. And if you're confident that he's going to start in every single one of those games, I think there is a chance that he could do just as well as Watkins, if not beat him. And you've saved that money to maybe spend elsewhere. So I think Salah is great. I'm not going to say he's a centre. I won't say that about many players, but he looks really good right now. I think Darwin is the next one that I would look at. And that's more to do with the other options from other teams in, in his position. And then maybe Trent. But for me, I'm definitely not going to go for Jota. And look, Diaz could do really well. But there's just so many other midfielders. I'll probably just not take that risk. So let's take a quick look at my team. Now, on the team selection video, I said that I was like 80, 85% sure that I was going to wildcard in game week 10. I think that's now closer to 100%. I just think all the moves I've made over the last few weeks have kind of been building to this point. So holding my Man United players through their good fixtures, knowing that I'd want to get rid of the Man City game in game week 10. I'm tripled up on Spurs, Udogi, Son and Madison. And don't get me wrong, right? They're not suddenly massive issues after game week 9. But the fixtures do turn a little bit. So my plan was always to get rid of one or two of them. And also the fixtures get very good for other teams. So Matoma at Brighton, Bowen at West Ham, Aston Villa as well. I can sort out my goalkeepers and the bench. There's just a lot of things that I want to do. And at this point, I feel like I need that fresh start as well. Because this team hasn't done well over the last few weeks. And I want to kind of just change it up a little bit, basically. Now, the problem I have in game week nine is I've got one transfer to use. And not really too many places to use it based on what we've heard from the press conferences so far i'm expecting most of my 11 if not all of them to start right apart from maybe turner which we kind of discussed earlier so i've got turner against Luton at home trippier against palace at home cash against west ham at home i've got that spurs triple up udogi son and madison then i got in Burma against burnley at home Fernandes and Rashford against Sheffield United away and alvarez and harland against brighton at home i've got 0.7 million in the bank now if We get word, or there's some doubt put in my mind about Alvarez starting, then he is probably who I will sell. And I've got 7.6 million to spend. Now, if I had the money, the the forward that I would be looking at is Callum Wilson, because I think he's great when he plays, right? His numbers are fantastic on penalties. Palace at home, not a bad fixture. Problem is, he's 7.8 million. If we were to get word that Darwin Nunez was starting, he would definitely be high up my list. After that, it gets quite tricky, which is why I've been keen to hold on to Alvarez because I think him at Brighton at home is good. I think I would probably go for Hoyland just as a gung-ho punt against Sheffield United away, a player that not many people have got. Everyone hates Man United right now. And as a one-week punt to get a third attacker from my team, I'd kind of be tempted to do that. So that's one move that I will look at. If we get closer to the deadline, 
and it looks more and more likely that, that Nottingham Forest game is going to be off, that I'm going to do the most boring thing possible and make a goalkeeper transfer, getting rid of Pickford, and then bench whichever goalkeeper that I bring in. Because if Matt Turner doesn't play, then I'd have someone better coming on instead. If you've already wildcarded or you're not doing it soon, and you've got, like I've got right now, Pickford against Liverpool, away, I just wouldn't use a transfer. I would just accept that you might have a bad goalkeeper this week. It's just not worth using a transfer on. But because I'm wildcarding next week, I've got the luxury of doing that, potentially, depending on you know any other news that comes out. Here's the thing. I've got, when I sell Pickford, I've got, 5.1 million to spend so i can't afford the likes of edison allison or pope it's got to be someone 5.1 or below and when you go through all the teams and sit down before i say this right okay don't laugh too much when you go through all the matches i think that anana is the best option right which i know will sound crazy and i don't think he's a good long-term option necessarily or anything like that but you go through the fixtures can't afford allison don't want Pickford away to Liverpool. I don't want a Bournemouth or Wolves goalkeeper. Potentially, Brentford goalkeeper against Burnley could be good. And Flecken is back in contention from what I've seen on the Brentford website. But it's not a guarantee, right? And for a week where maybe my main first 11 goalkeeper misses out, I don't want to take a risk on a Brentford goalkeeper. So that probably would be the way. But I don't want to go there. Can't afford Edison. Not going to buy a Brighton goalkeeper away to Man City. Um, not going to get Johnston either. Forrest and Luton obviously could be off. Chelsea and Arsenal are not expecting a clean sheet there. And then you've got Villa against West Ham. I could go for Martinez, but I don't think West Ham or Villa are keeping a clean sheet this week. And Vicario at Spurs could definitely be a good option, although he might actually be too expensive. Let me just have a quick look. Not that it matters. Now he's 5.1, so I can afford it, but I'm already tripping up on Spurs, and I'm not going to take a hit so I can get the Spurs goalkeeper in. So I think Anana versus Sheffield United away, as long as that match is going to go ahead is probably the best option. So my move could be, in one of the most boring things you've ever heard from an FPL content creator ever, could be Pickford to Anana and then bench him. And he'll only come on if, if uh, Turner doesn't play. But I just think with the money I've got to spend on only one transfer, there's not a huge amount of stuff I can do with that first 11. I would love Salah, as I've said before, but I'm not going to take a minus four or a minus eight to do it. And I can't even really take a minus four. It pretty much has to be a minus eight. Otherwise, I'm just buying another dud that's not going to do anything for me this week. So, yeah, that's where, I, that's where it stands right now. Look, embargoed quotes could come out later. We could get more information ahead of the deadline. Maybe we find out Rashford's not starting or Alvarez, in which case I make a different move. But as it stands right now, Pickford to Anana could be the way. I mean, if Pickford's going to drop in price and Ariola's going to go up, then I could make that move and just accept that if Ariola comes off the bench and concedes against West Ham, uh, sorry, concedes against Villa, so be it. But I think I'd rather go, instead of saving 0 0.1 million, I think I'd rather go for the potential points against Sheffield United. Like, an, like whatever's happened, surely a Nana against Sheffield United away is better than Ariola against Villa away. And Villa are such a good attacking team. I don't know. A goalkeeper transfer could be on the cards. If you've enjoyed that video, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you're listening on podcast, please do rate five stars as well. And if you want to join me for the deadline stream tomorrow, it'll probably be starting around 9.30 a.m. UK time. So I'll catch some of you there. If you're not joining me for that, good luck with your decisions this week. And obviously, if any major news comes out between now and the deadline, I'll, I'll be tweeting about it as normal and obviously covering it on the deadline stream as well. So I'll catch you again tomorrow.